Well, good evening. Uh, just a few announcements tonight, and uh, um, we've got a sign-up sheet up here on the front if you haven't already. Uh, maybe put your number on there where I can have it uh, put in my cell phone and all, so, uh, and you'll see my number in the bulletin this week, and uh, just uh, a reminder of that. Also, uh, tonight, uh, we're going to be needing some help to move some tables and chairs in the back uh, after the service tonight. Uh, if you would uh, be able to help us do that. They're supposed to come and clean the floors tomorrow back there, so uh, uh, if you can, i uh, be glad and appreciated if you would do that. And I also would just like to uh, thank the youth, uh, uh, everyone that uh, participated this morning and helped uh, in the uh, fellowship dinner after church and everything. Thank you for doing that, and I uh, appreciate that. And... Uh, uh, does anybody else have an announcement or anything tonight? Please remember my niece. Uh, she's had a, a bio, uh, surgery for her lung cancer. Thank you for that. Thank the Lord for that. Someone else? And thank you for praying for Blake. Mm -hmm. He did a good job. Good. Um, he preached on special teas. And he preached on trials, tribulation, and the last tea was the cross. Amen. And it was a good job. And I, I want to thank Kenny. I'm not singling him out. He had a lot of Sunday school teachers. But Kenny's been a blessing to some of my grandsons. And, and he helped them to grow. Yeah. I appreciate, we appreciate yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Say so faithfulness pays off. You don't, it's not just for you. It's not just for you. It's for everybody that comes up behind you. You'll be an influence and don't even know that you're an influence to somebody. Sometimes it's grand, being grandpa, sometimes it's Sunday school teachers. It, 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 very, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Ain't that right? But just being there to do that. I appreciate that. I did not. Someone else. Well, if not tonight, uh, you do remember all those on the prayer list tonight. There's lots uh, that's uh, sick, some very sick uh, in the hospital. Some we don't know uh, exactly what's going to happen, but the Lord does. Uh, but uh, we, we do pray for them. Uh, some, some good news. I know uh, we talked about this in uh, uh, training union back in the back. Uh, Miss Nora Rose, she had her surgery this week. Maybe you've seen that. Uh, she looks a lot different. We sort of got used to the way she looked beforehand, but she's doing real well and just continue to pray for her and her family. Uh, what a blessing uh, the Lord does there. So, uh, And just those others that are on there, uh, glad to see Russ was here this morning and just remember him, but uh, I'll miss some if I don't. Uh, but uh, you remember each one of those. Pray for them throughout the week. Uh, maybe a uh, call just whatever you might want to do, send a card, whatever the Lord directs you there, just do that. So, uh, but if there's nothing else tonight, we'll take up our evening tithes and offering and uh, ask these uh, gentlemen to come around. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord and Savior Jesus,
like this in my throat. Uh, give me trouble for months now, but follow this song. We talked in training union. By the way, Ryan did a super job in training union tonight. And appreciate these young folks that uh, are willing to help us out and, and uh, to, uh, you know, do their part uh, for his, you know, his glory and honor. But I love this song, and ooh, it's going to be tough tonight. But uh, uh, one day I was lost and undone out in sin. And we talked about these folks that, you know, Abraham and, you know, the uh, uh, Peter, how he denied Christ and many different things. And, and you know, we, we're, we're like them. They're human just like we are. And, you know, they were lost like we are but by faith. The uh, Bible says Abraham by faith all these other folks by faith, but I wasn't looking for Jesus, but he found me, and that's the name of the song, Jesus Found Me. <coughs> I was on the mountain, wandering from the fountain, when I heard my Savior speak to me from out the shadow, saying, come to me, relenting, of your sins repenting I will lead you out where you can see
says that all the time. I can say it too. I love you. Uh, if you would, let's all stand for just a moment and uh, let's fellowship. Good evening once again. Yep. Uh, appreciate uh, each one of you. Appreciate the uh, songs tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, started out with He Touched Me. Uh, ended with getting on board the old ship. So that takes both uh, to get on that boat uh, and that ship tonight. But uh, appreciate you. Love you. Um, hope you had a good afternoon. And uh, But we're going to be in uh, First John tonight back back there. I want to want to talk to you some tonight, uh, preach to you for just a little while. Uh, I've got some notes here, but I don't know if I'm going to stick with them. That's pretty normal for me, though. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I, I, will, I will ask you, you know, really, if you were wanting to look at what I'm going to be preaching about tonight is uh, marks of a new birth, marks of a new spiritual birth that we all have, there's going to be a difference that occurs in our hearts uh, that um, through time, uh, you can call it sanctification process, but I always call it, a, there's a fine red line in my life that the Lord, I've said that before, 
that the Lord should be able, you should be able to see the Lord's work in your life uh, throughout your lifetime. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, tonight I want to uh, preach to you out of 1 John tonight. But uh, uh, you, know, it's, you know, you may not know the time or day. You know, I've heard some people stand up and say, well, I remember uh, in August night and so-and-so time of the year, I, I remember an old deacon that's done, went on that I had at uh, uh, Rising Pond, Joe Tripp, he would say that he knew exactly the time, the day, and everything about it. But you're looking at one that I got saved in August. I couldn't tell you the day. Uh, I don't know the time, but I know what happened to me. And, and uh, it's just the same way as we look at our natural life for a moment. You don't know when you was born. You know, your mama has got a birth certificate. All you know is you're alive. And that's the difference, you know. A spiritual life, we need to know that we're alive. Uh, you know, and that we've had a change of heart. Uh, and uh, I, I want to read and, and uh, talk to you and preach some tonight. As I was talking about this today, we're going to look at a few different verses tonight. And uh, we'll start in 1 John chapter 2, probably. And uh, if I don't get done, that's fine too. But uh, uh, in chapter 2 and verse 29, uh, we're going to be looking at some things here at the marks of a spiritual deportment. And that. You say, well, what's that word mean? I had to look it up too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but it means behavior or uh, manners. Uh, in other words, how you act. Your spiritual uh, behavior and how we do this. And that's what he's talking about here in verse 29 tonight. So uh, I'll read this and get started. We'll read some more verses in a few minutes. But let me read this one verse and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. With His great uh, mercy and help tonight, we'll preach a little while. Uh, but in uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 29 says, If ye know that He is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of Him. Let's pray. Our dear, most gracious and wonderful Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for Your goodness. We pray, God, tonight uh, that Your blessing will be upon Your Word and that You would just hide me behind the cross. Uh, we thank You for Your goodness, Your love, that You... Uh, administered to us through your love on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that help us just to live like you want us to live each and every day to share that love with one another. We thank you, Lord, for eternal life. We thank you for the spiritual hope that we have in our hearts. We pray tonight that you'll just bless the service, Lord, and everything we do. Just bring glory and honor to you, Lord. We pray all this in your precious name. Amen. So tonight I want to preach to you some. Just for a few minutes I want to uh, look at this and what this word right here means. If you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of Him. That word doeth means to practice. Now, you and I can't do righteousness out of our own heart without the Lord Jesus Christ working in. You say, well, uh, Paul talked about we all had our past with those evil deeds that we've done in our life. There's not a person here that wasn't once lost and, and, and on their way to hell. Uh, you partook of that uh, ever how lightly, ever how heavenly. It doesn't matter to him. Sin is sin in God's eyes, so it doesn't matter you, if you've done one or if you've done a thousand, you're on your way to hell. And without the Lord Jesus Christ mercifully uh, uh, speaking to us and, and calling us, you know, I, I heard an old story one time, I, I think it's absolutely the truth. There's not a person, the Bible talks about, there's not a person that went to looking for the Lord. Uh, he came and sought us. We were in content with doing what we were doing. Uh, didn't know any different, so to speak, at the time until that light shined in on our heart and condemned us and we knew that we were sinners. But we see here that we cannot do anything without the Lord. And, and so we know, and John is talking here, uh, he's trying really what First John is about is that we know this is about the love of God, uh, but his concern with uh, uh, the Apostle John was, was those false doctrines that come in, those false uh, shepherds that were leading people wrong. And what uh, the scriptures talk about is, uh, you know, you can, and we live in a day now, and I've said this before, that people say, well, we're Christian, we're a Christian nation, I'm a Christian, you know, I go to church and that sort of thing, I dart the doors once a month or whatever. 
Uh, but I'm telling you here, and this is what John, your actions, your behavior that you live every day is going to tell what you are. Now you can say I'm a Christian and I live a life, you know, for the Lord and such as that. And, and I, I, I know that I'm talking to the choir tonight and such as that, but we can see in people's lives uh, that whether or not they uh, practice what they preach is so the old saying goes. And, and uh, we're not, I'm not up here telling you that, uh, you know, you're perfect, you're not going to sin. We, uh, we're going to fall, we stumble. I think Brother Jack said in training unit, we do it daily. Uh, there's, uh, there's things you say, well, I don't go out and deliberately sin. Yes, you may not, but I promise you, you probably thought a thought you shouldn't think, and you might even let a word slip that you should have said. So we all fall daily. I'm not saying we're not sinners. We still are in a sense because we live in this body uh, tonight. But, but we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is righteous. There's none perfect but one, one, the Son of God. Uh, there's only one way to the Father. The Father has put all things in His control and He has took it from His hands and said, Son, here it is. So if you want to meet the Father, I think it was uh, this morning that Brother Fred talked about uh, 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 some of the Sadducees, Pharisees said, you know, we, we're Abraham's seed. He said, well, uh, if you knew my father, you would know me. See, the difference is if you want to know God, you've got to go through Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ is a manifestation of who the Father is. The Father is a spirit, but the Lord Jesus Christ took on flesh. And we know all about him because all you got to do is read the Bible. <laughs> and, and tonight, so we know that he is righteous. So we know that. So ye know that everyone that practices righteousness is born of him. So it, uh, uh, it is a lifelong process. Uh, you know, sanctification. I think some of the older uh, guys in the uh, 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 training union back there tonight said it, uh, they, it's, it's unusual how we grasp things at, at the end of life. It takes us uh, 50, 60, 70 years to grasp that that the Lord is trying to teach us. In other words, they was talking about being rooted in the word. And, and you know, and I, I, I didn't say that back there, but man, if I could have go back and say, what in the world was I thinking in my 20s? What in the world was I doing uh, goofing off or chasing something that don't mean a thing? You understand that? We all can say that. You know, and there's times in our life uh, uh, that we have that the Lord wasn't just our number one go. That's really, you might as well just own up to it. And, that, and so uh, we see that tonight, but there's, there's something here that, uh, uh, that we as believers should practice every day. It, it is something. We strive to do that that's right. I didn't say, as I said earlier, we're not perfect. I understand that. But if you're, I always say it like that, if you're willing, willing is the most important thing. Now, you know, it's not like a, a lost person. If you get a lost person to thinking about going to church, you've done one about 60 or 70 percent of the battle. I mean, it ain't our battle, I understand that, but if you can get a person to engage to enough to go, he's on the right road and he may get saved. But you have some that just don't want to hear it. Uh, we can't get them to buzz. But, but the point of it is tonight that that righteousness that God gives, uh, it is dwelt in me. It's in me. It's in you if you're a believer. So you know him. He's, uh, that's what makes us children of God. Uh, that's what makes us special. There's nothing special about me physically. You say, well, I come for, I don't matter where you come from. I don't care if you trace yourself back and your queen of England is your grandmother. It's no big deal to me. I, I, it's not that important. But to be the son of God and the ladies and the, the women of God is a precious thing. Uh, 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 whatever may come in this world, God's got control. And, and I'm not of this world. So that righteousness is, is done inside of us. So if we would, you'd like to turn over, uh, in my Bible you have to, but chapter 3 and verse 9 uh, tonight. It says, uh, now, uh, the mark of a spiritual desire is what this would be considered right here. We all have desires. We've been talking about that on Wednesday night. You uh, that have come on Wednesday night, uh, we talked about that uh, earlier in the chapters. I, I don't care who you are, you've got desires. 
God put desires in you, and it could be we, we got all kinds of desires in us. We have uh, 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 desires for husband and wife. We have desires for food. We have desires for sleep. Uh, you could just name it. And, and all of these that we desire, in a sense, are not bad in themselves. Today, I hope you did not overeat. Uh, 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 there's a desire for food because our body needs food. It, that's a proven fact. If you don't eat, you won't live. Uh, but there's a case there we can have too much of a desire or a desire in the wrong place. And so we all have that spiritual desire. And so in verse 9 it says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, are you saying, that means I don't sin? I'm all perfect? What that word commits means is practice sin. The same principle earlier that we practice righteousness, that we live in extreme and we try to live a godly life each and every day. It adds up to months. It adds up to years. Over a lifetime, we should see uh, that we could say that uh, you could put your name there and say he or she is, is a godly person. They strive to do their best and live a godly life. Uh, but we, hear, we see here that uh, uh, whosoever is born of God doth not practice sin. Uh, we know, I hope you know, uh, as you grow in the, in the Lord, that uh, what the Lord does not want us to do, which is commit sin or practice sin, uh, we're to stay away from it. It's a lure. We talk about that Sunday night in the back. It, it, it's something that creeps into us. It, he's sly. He's sneaky. Uh, it, it, he, you know, uh, I heard an old preacher say one time uh, that sin is just like a, a Christmas gift. All it is is just wrapped in a different box every time. Just got different pretty paper on it. Some light blue, some light pink, some light green. Something attracts you and you go to it, but we're to stay away from it. And so we see that tonight. But it says here, for his seed remaineth in him. Now, to have a seed in you, you've got to have it planted. Did you agree with that? Has anybody ever tried to grow anything without a seed in a garden? Nothing comes up but weeds. I mean, you're not going to get nothing. Uh, uh, so we see that his seed, now what he is, the word he is there, I believe is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's God's seed. Uh, he's the one that drawed us out of that sin. He's the one that planted it in us. And so we have that seed in us. Now we know through our life that He, uh, he wants it to grow. We talked about that before. Uh, he wants us to uh, grow. He'll, 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 he'll give you the nutrients and the things that you need. Uh, he wants you to grow. He wants you to produce fruit. He wants you to grow up into a mature tree. Uh, he wants you to be strong in the faith and to do the things that He has us to do. But but it says that, that his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin uh, uh, because he's born of God. Do you know, and I, this is where I get this from. Do you know, and I've said this before. Do you know you've got something on the inside of you that's never sinned? You say, well that is impossible. I'm telling you tonight, if you don't have that in there, then you're not a, a son of God. Because Jesus Christ planted a seed in my heart, washed in his blood, that there's a spot down in my heart that's absolutely perfect. And it's not me, it's Jesus Christ in his righteousness. And he will call upon it one day. The Bible says we're sealed until the day of redemption. Uh, we're sealed. Uh, it did not matter if you go to the grave or you, come, you were alive as we talked about this morning. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, there's a seal on there and if you know anything about uh, uh, looking at anything uh, maybe in Old Testament or in history itself there's nobody that can break a seal except the one that's got the right ring and has the authority to break the seal uh, and it'd be just like me going to Brother Fred's or Don's mailbox and saying well I just believe I'll just take a look at your mail uh, I have no business there. It's not mine. I'm not capable of opening their, their It's not issued to me. Do you understand that? 
Uh, so we're a child of God and we're sealed to him. Uh, we belong to him. He is the only one that can open it up. He's the only one that can claim it. And thank God that he's got that seal on the inside of me. And you are a born again Christian because Jesus Christ has sealed you to the day of redemption. You belong to the Lord. Uh, there is no one other that can get you. You can die and lay in the ground for a thousand years. Uh, but when the trumpet sounds and the Lord speaks, you're going to come out. It's not because uh, uh, someone else hollered your name. It, it's because he has the authority. He's the one that has the authority. We belong to him. So that that's inside of us is perfect. Uh, now it lives, and we all know this, it lives in a corruptible body. And the Bible talks about one day we'll put on incorruption. Uh, we'll be likened unto the Son of God. Whatever he sees looks like is what we'll look like. His righteousness will be given to me, will be given you. It's already actually done been given to you. You just ain't went and picked it up yet. It's like at the dry cleaners downtown. You need to go by and pick it up. Your name will be called. You'll swing by. You'll pick it up, and it's yours. And, but the Lord is the one that provides that for us this, uh, tonight. So uh, we say that we cannot sin because he is born of God. We belong to the Lord God, the Heavenly Father, and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, so uh, that desire that we have in our hearts uh, uh, is not to commit sin, not to practice it, uh, but to practice righteousness. It's a desire. The Bible said, uh, Jesus said this, it's not what goeth in a man that uh, defileth a man, it's that that proceedeth out. Why? Because it comes from the heart. That's the root of everything is found in the heart uh, tonight. So we see that. Then we see the mark of spiritual disposition. Means temperament, <clears throat> character, and placement. And you'll find this in verse 7 of chapter 4 tonight. Now, uh, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Now, oh, we know this, the character or the choosing a placement upon one another. You know, when we have the love of God in our hearts, uh, you can't help but love people. And the closer, that's why I always say, uh, the closer your relationship is with God and the, and the Son, Jesus Christ, the closer you are, the more you'll love. It's a proven fact. Uh, it, we do it, and we say that a lot of times. Uh, people that uh, uh, get married, uh, you'll most of the time, uh, nowadays, uh, 20 years old or so, uh, they'll get married. How is it when you talk to somebody that's been married 50 or 60 or 70 years, they say, well, I love her more today or I love him more today than I did when I met him. How's that possible? I mean, have you ever looked in the mirror? I have. Uh, I didn't look like I did when I walked down the aisle, or she walked down the aisle to me. I mean, you know, uh, if we have any more uh, eatings like that, you even get worse. But, uh, uh, but the point of it is tonight, we, 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 we know that that relationship with the Lord should grow stronger. Just like our, our earthly married life uh, is, a, is an example uh, that God ordained, but it's a fine example of our relationship with the Lord that we always should grow closer. And uh, I, I kid a, a boy at work when I was up there that I was talking to a young man and uh, we was talking about this very fact about relationship. And, and I've often said it like this. Uh, have you ever asked Jesus what his favorite sandwich is? Uh, and I told him about my wife. My wife doesn't like mayonnaise on nothing. I mean, it don't matter what it is, she just won't eat it. Well, I know that, and I finally learned that. It took me a while, okay? Uh, but the point of it is, you don't understand nobody until you spend some time with them. You don't know what the Lord likes. Now, we can all say here and just roughly say, the Lord is righteous. He doesn't like sin. You've covered all the bases, yeah. 
But what is it that he really don't like? What about him is it that nobody else knows about him? Have you spent enough time to understand him and what he really likes? And I always use it as an example. Wonder what kind of sandwich he likes. Uh, does he like sweet tea? Or does he like Coca-Cola? What's he really like to drink? What's his favorite thing? And for us to spend time when we'll know more about it. And that's what God wants us to do, uh, is to spend more time about it. But we choose uh, those that we love. You say, well, but I, I say that in general because if, if we draw close to the Lord, the Bible says he'll draw close to us. My Bible tells me God is what? Love. And so if we love uh, one another, then we have fulfilled the law, the Bible said. You know, when you love one another, you know, uh, we have c accomplished that that the Lord has done in our hearts. Just uh, look over everything and just continue to love one another. So we see that. And then tonight we look in uh, uh, chapter 5 and verse 1, and it says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Uh, so we see tonight that uh, uh, those we can judge, what, you know, I'll say it like this, you know, there's lots of people in the world, I went to school with some, that could tell you all kinds of things. They're very smart, intelligent. But you ever met anybody that just don't have no common sense? Uh, you know, uh, I'd rather have, I, I, you really want a little of both. You want to be balanced out. Uh, but it, it really messes you up if you ain't got no common sense. Uh, you may be intelligent and not have a lot. Now, I, I, you know, but I, I'd say go back to the scriptures and uh, ask God for wisdom and just go on, okay? <laughs> uh, but uh, now we, we, we can judge uh, uh, here. We can see evidence of people. He, he give us some common sense uh, of people that we meet, even though, as I said earlier, People say sometimes that they're saved, uh, they're a born again Christian. Uh, but we can see and uh, judge on our own. Now, I'm not to judge, don't get me wrong, don't misunderstand that. But he gives us common sense to understand and look at people's lives and say, I'm just not sure that he got everything he needed. And we just, we just come to that conclusion uh, and pray for him. But uh, he says here, Whoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. The Bible says that no man can confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior unless it's by the Holy Spirit uh, uh, that lives within us. So uh, we, we know that, that, that anybody can uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I know uh, me and uh, uh, Brother Robert, maybe, uh, you know, uh, there's some denominations that don't believe that. Uh, they, they just believe a select few. And, but uh, besides all that, but it says, whosoever believeth that, uh, Jesus Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, meaning God, and begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Love the Father, you love the Son. If you love the Son, you love the Father. You can't get one without the other. There, it's impossible. Uh, uh, you can't have and say, I, I believe there's a God, so does the de uh, devil and his angels. Absolutely, the Bible tells that. Uh, but they don't believe, uh, they understand it, but they don't believe, they don't have that faith. They understand even though we haven't seen that we know Jesus Christ came to earth and died on Calvary. Uh, God formed in a, in a man and, and placed all the sins of the world upon him my sins, your sins, the whole world's sins, so that that love would be manifested to us that us could be called the sons of God. So we know that tonight. But uh, uh, us, one that loveth him, begot, uh, uh, loveth him also that is begotten of him. So if you've got the son, you've got the father. You've got the father, you've got the son. And that is something to say. Uh, you, so, well, I don't have much in this world. But you've got eternal treasure. You've got eternal home. Uh, you say, well, a rich man's got everything. I used to hear, uh, uh, and we know this, uh, uh, from Psalms or Proverbs, that uh, those that do evil and those things, this is their heaven, so to speak. This is the good as it's going to ever get. 
uh, uh, unless the Lord convicts their heart and they turn their life over uh, 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 to Him. Uh, but we see that we can look upon people and, and get an understanding uh, of, of, of who people are. Uh, that the God, the Father, and the Son are these two. Uh, uh, so we move tonight and we know there's a, there's a mark of spiritual deliverance and we can find it in the same chapter here in verses four and five. It says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, what does it take to overcome the world? It takes faith. Now, I, I've said this like this before. All of you are going to leave in a little while. You don't even think nothing about it right now. I can promise you. You'll go out and sit in your car, take a key or push a button and the new ones, uh, and it'll start. It will surprise you if that old die-hard battery don't crank. See, I can have faith, but the, the key to it is what do we have faith in? And to overcome the world, we have to have faith in the one that has overcome the world and overcome that sin in the world, which is Jesus Christ. And that's what verse 5 is talking about. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. That's how you overcome the world. Have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is, that is uh, 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 the mark of uh, spiritual deliverance. Uh, that's the, uh, the reason, you know, we talk about that some. You, you have faith. Uh, even a lost person's got faith. You know that? He just don't have it in Jesus Christ. He's got it in material things. He's got it in the things of the world. It could be bank accounts. It could be uh, uh, livestock. It could be land. Uh, whatever material things are, he's got faith. He just don't have it in the right thing. And, and uh, for us as Christians, and for uh, Mount Carmel to do, is to uh, show and point that that faith is in the wrong thing. Uh, just to explain to them or to demonstrate to them uh, uh, that the faith has to be in Jesus Christ. And how do you do that? Love them. Love them and just tell them about it. Uh, you know, uh, the Bible talks about raising kids and you know, it, uh, it says, you know, if you spare the rod, uh, you know, you'll spoil the child. I, I understand all that, uh, you know, uh, but the Bible's pretty plain about that. Do you know if you love your kids, you'll spank them? I mean, you say, well, I don't believe in spanking. Well, I can't help what you believe and what you don't believe. I'm telling you what Scripture says. I didn't say we go out and beat them to death. I didn't say you may feel like it, but I'm telling you, take you a deep breath and go somewhere else for a little while. But good raising is nothing. And that's the same way he does us. I get a spanking. The Lord gets on me, boy, I, ooh, it's rough. Uh, uh, we don't like it. Uh, uh, but he loves me. Now, point of it is, if you love your child or kids, uh, you, you will discipline. Uh, you don't want them to be the hoodlums of Fort Payne, Alabama. And say, oh my, here comes that Durham boy again. Oh my Lord. Uh, put everything up, sh shut the door, lock the windows. Uh, he's on the loose. You know, you don't want to raise a child like that. Uh, 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 but that's the same way with us. The Lord loves us. And he, he, he sees about us. And oh, he takes care of us uh, uh, like that. And, and so our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're to show that love to a lost and dying world. Uh, if we love those that are lost, we will take the gospel to them. It, it's as simple as that. You say, well, I love them, but I'm too scared. So am I a lot of times. I get nervous. But I can promise you, because I've never been there, the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ will give you what you need in that time and that minute and that hour. I can promise you that. It goes back to having that love in our hearts. If you love them, you would share that. You know, the awfulest thought that I've often had in a, in a, in a, a we're fixing to close in a few minutes, but uh, uh, is this. When I get to heaven, and we all understand that, I, you know, we're saved, I'm going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and, and, and I'll give an account of what I've done in this body. You will too. 
What a dreadful day it's going to be. But even worse than that is a suspect of like what Brother Fred was talking about this morning. After our judgment, after the thousand year reign, God calls up those that don't know him. It's called a great white throne judge. You'll be present there. So, well, no, I'm not part of the. I think some way or another we're going to be standing back over here with the Lord and looking, but I believe this, that that lost person, I walked by me that I knew. And I, this is what's heartbreaking. They're going to look at you and they're going to say, I work with you or whatever, you know, that you spent time with. Why didn't you ever tell me about the Lord? Now, if I tell them about the Lord, you know it talks about in the Old Testament that, that you're a watchman and you're standing on a tower and you tell out, here comes trouble, here comes problems, you need to get right, here comes the, the things that's going to happen. If you do your part, the Bible says that, that blood's not on you. You know, we have, we have a responsibility. God just didn't uh, save us all and jerk us up in a bag and say, well, that's good, boys, you believe in me, I'm going to heaven. Uh, uh, he le left us down here to learn, but he also left us down here to show that gospel or show that love to one another tonight. So uh, in, a, in a simple form, if we love those that we say we love, we'll, we'll show it. You won't, it, it. Love is a crazy thing. I mean, you ain't, I, I, I've been in church and there's more been done with somebody hugging my neck or me hugging somebody else's. You know that? Not a word said because it's love. And then there's sometimes that you just go up and you might have to say a few words. Just tell them and stuff. But it goes back to just willing tonight. So uh, we have that spiritual deliverance that we have from the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that overcome the world. So we, we have that hope uh, in him. You know, if he, if he's not going to leave us here. We're, we're not, we're not going to be failures. Uh, you may feel like it sometimes. You may get disappointed. But on the end, if we just keep our eyes on the Lord and keep faithful and, and strive to do the best we can and keep moving to the future, like we're winning. Uh, it just, just, uh, and he's already overcome it. And the final thing tonight is found in verse 18 tonight. And it says, uh, uh, the mark of spiritual dominion. It says, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. So uh, uh, here it's talking about, but he that is begotten of God, which is Jesus Christ, uh, he keepeth himself. He keepeth us. You know, when we talk about that a lot about Job, there's nothing going to come into your life without God's permission. You understand that? I don't care what it is. There is nothing coming in your life without God the Father and the Son's permission. The devil may hound them up in heaven and turn red in the face telling them they want to get to you. But whatever does come your way is went through a mighty graceful hand that the Lord just sifts and certain things go through. He holds a lot back. We just don't understand that all the time. We, we, we look at our circumstances sometimes and see the, the trouble that comes into our life but we, as I've said before, there's always someone that's in worse shape than you are. The point of it is all where we're looking at. Do we look at the problems that we have right in front of us? Or do we look at the Lord and say, thank you, Lord, that it's not no worse than it is. Uh, thank you for your blessings. Still had something to eat. Still got a place to sleep. Whatever it is that the Lord has allowed you to have, we need to look at the good side, and we need that. But we have that, uh, uh, we have that in our hearts that uh, we can con control the way our outlook is. Uh, uh, we, can, we can be great workers for Christ uh, because He is on our side tonight. So I just wanted to share that with you tonight. I hope and pray that uh, maybe you, uh, the Lord has uh, blessed you and give you, as I call it, a nugget. Uh, that you can uh, use this week and uh, help you uh, and uh, hope and just love you. I appreciate you. Um, but uh, uh, I, aren't you glad you're saved? Uh, buddy, I am. Uh, you know, uh, no matter what might happen, uh, you know, you might, you might go home tonight and be homeless. I ain't got a clue. Uh, but I do know I have eternal home. 
I have an eternal home that nothing can get, nothing can touch, and the Lord has is, is promised me that and uh, by his grace and his, his love tonight. So uh, I appreciate each one of you. We're going to uh, 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 ask Brother Robert to come and uh, uh, them to play the instruments tonight. You may need to pray. I don't know your heart, but I know this, that uh, uh, live, live for Christ the best you can. Uh, we're not perfect. There's not, we were talking about it in training union tonight. There's not a person. Uh, the best folks we read about in the Bible, you'll read somewhere that they, they failed and they come up short to the Lord. The, the problem is that it's not the problem of following, it's the problem of staying. Get up and just crawl. Get back on your feet. put the Lord first in our lives uh, tonight and just love on Him uh, and, and have a good spiritual life. Uh, you, can't, you can't ask for nothing else. That the Lord just bless you tonight. Uh, so, Brother Robert, if you would stand to your feet.